Okay, it literally just shows more if you click it. Okay. So you just gotta click it every time. Deal no physical damage, 20 to lightning resistance. Minus 20 to cold resistance. 4% increased movement speed. Oh, okay. So the modifiers are different depending on the gear type. They're not just like across the board thing. Makes sense. Curse enemies with conductivity on hit. You have no life regeneration. Plus one to minimum frenzy charge. Minus 10 to all elemental resistance. I mean, the punishments don't seem that punishing. Botex fire an additional arrow. Deal no cold damage. Fucking hell. Gotta figure out how many modifiers there are. So how likely it is to actually hit your items. I mean, I'm sure we're gonna get information about that soon. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Can't see the passives? Man, that is a lot of passives though. Again, I really wish that Clis, the Clis, Clis Lilson uh, clarified how long is this gonna get take to take to take. But there's probably a lot of these where you're just never gonna worry about them even if they're somewhat beneficial. Shift into Nightmare and killing a very unique enemy. We've seen this in the trailer. Is shifting into Nightmare the scourging? Yes, okay. Why not become scourge guy? Shift into Nightmare? No, you can't use that. I feel like Nightmare is important. You cannot manually shift into Nightmare. Players have minus 30 chance to suppress spell damage while in Nightmare. Oh, wow. Minus 30 chance. So you overcapping your spell suppression seems to be hopefully useful. Rare Scourge monsters drop one additional Scarab. Damn. But how long do you shift into Nightmare for after killing the rare or unique enemy? It did change something about SRS. I won't tell you exactly what, but it's a big deal. Pain Champ. Is it as big of a deal as removing EE and making it completely useless? Like, they strictly nerfed SRS, as far as I know, so far. Mm. Forbidden Nexus. Shift into Nightmare on killing a rare unique enemy. Cannot manually shift. Players have minus to 60 physical damage reduction while in Nightmare. Damn. 20% increased quantity of items found in Nightmare. Monsters in Nightmare grant 15% more experience. Rare Scourge monsters drop two additional basic currency items. Mamma mia. Monsters in Nightmare do 120% more damage. Scourge tier 10. This is 1, this is 4, this is 10. Monsters in Nightmare take 45% less damage. Players lose 300 life per second in Nightmare. Rare Scourge monsters drop 3 additional maps? Rare Scourge monsters drop 7 additional stacked decks. What the fuck? This is tier three. R randomly shift. Huh. In and out of nightmare. Cannot manually shift into nightmare. Take 6,000 fire damage when you shift into or out of nightmare. <laughs> Players lose 300 energy shield per second while in nightmare. Area contains an additional scourge boss. Scourge boss. There are bosses. Poogers, that's fucking cool. Rare Scourge monsters drop two additional tainted currency items. Damn! 6,000 fire damage. Only take 6k damage. Well, you wouldn't. It's 6,000 fire damage. So I only take 25% of that. It's not that much. Unless there's no cooldown on this and you can just get fucked over because it just goes beep, 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 switches three times and you're instantly dead. It's not a big deal. 1,500 damage is quite a bit. I mean... No. <laughs> it's not much at all. I understand that your character that has 3k life, that like, that's a big deal, but... Not for me. Energy Shield Mastery. Life radius is based on energy shield instead of life. Oh, poggers. Finally, 30% increased life. Light radius. Oh, nice. This is sick. Okay, that's great. I was just complaining about how I couldn't see anything with my other character. At least with this, I'll be able to see more. Can I be frozen if energy shield recharge has started recently? Oh. Sun threshold is based off on 50% of your energy shield instead of life. Oh. That's not that good. 
50% of your... Well, then again, everybody's got more energy shield now, right? Like, a lot more. Like, substantially more. The Morest. Regenerate 2% of energy shield per second. That's worth a point. Gain 3% of maximum mana is extra maximum energy shield. That's huge. Discipline has 25% increased mana reservation efficiency. That's big, too. And these are just energy shield ones. So you're pretty much always going to have these. That's cool. Those are big. I wonder how much more efficient the skill tree is going to be. Oh, there's skill gems at level one. Do we even want to read these? Fuck me. There's so much stuff, man. We're going to be here forever. You skipped? Click on the screenshots. Oh, it shows the other stuff. Brand mastery. Recover 10% of mana when a brand expires while attached. That's kind of cool, honestly. You can do some cool shit with Swift Brands with this, maybe. Brands have 30% increased area of effect if 50% attached duration expired. That's awful. Brands attached to a new enemy each time they activate no more than once every 0.3 seconds. Mm -mm -mm. Fuck me. The thing is that Holy Conquest doesn't just give you this. It also gives you other stuff that is really powerful for Brands, so... We'll see what they do with the rest of this stuff. Brand Recall has 50%. Increased cooldown recovery rate. 50%. That's big. You can cast two additional brands. That's fucking gigantic too. 40% increased brand attachment range. Yeah. Cool quality of life. All right. Not bad. Fire Mastery we've seen. And then, oh, this stuff. Okay, this stuff's interesting. What do we have here? Solely... Oh no, they're gonna make me fucking read stuff like Solifism. Solifism. Intelligence provides no inherent bonus to energy shield. 2% reduced duration of ailments on you per 15 energy shield. Huge! I think we've seen something like this. It's really good. Mage Bane. Dexterity provides no inherent bonus to evasion rating. 1% chance to suppress spell damage per 15 dexterity. Hmm. I don't know how useful this is going to be in realistic scenarios. Because the evasion rating is just so important now, you know? But it might be. It might be. Take 50% less damage over time if you started taking damage over time in the past second. 100% more duration of ailments on you. Man, global less damage over time. If you started taking damage over time in the past second. If you started in the past second, RF, Pog. Yeah, but then you'd have to have another realistic way of starting to take that damage over time in the last second. Like if it was four seconds, then I can see this being super OP, but otherwise it's hard to implement this in like a, some consistent basis. Not for a ref. I mean, you can use this alongside a ref. Right? You used it, like, RF wouldn't count for this, but you can use something else and then also have a ref, I'm pretty sure. And then, obviously, that makes your RF real juicy. Self-ignite? Yeah. Self-ignite would be the way to do it. Golden rule, self-poison? True. But obviously, you want something that synergizes with something like RF. Just taking 50% less damage over time is just not a big deal, unless you're using RF. Like, there's no real other use for it. I don't think. It's very niche, but it seems like super strong. How does it work with Petrified Blood? Take less damage over time. Alright, let's see. Divine Shield cannot recover energy shield to above armor. Cannot recover energy shield to above armor. 3% of total physical damage prevented from hits recently is regenerated as energy shield per second. So does this just mean that if I have like 20,000 armor and 30,000 energy shield, then I won't be able to go over that 20,000? Total physical damage prevention from hits recently is regenerated as energy shield. I mean, honestly, this looks really strong. A very specific setup because it's an armor energy shield setup but you know what also is an armor energy shield setup aegis aurora it looks like it's got a lot of potential defensively but it's one of those things that you have to stack a lot and i also still need to see like what the new items are realistically going to be looking like but this seems very strong uh can i recover energy shield to above evasion rating 
Every two seconds. Oh, fuck. This has a downside. Okay. Every two seconds, gain a ghost trail up to a maximum of three. When hit, lose a ghost trail to recover energy shield equal to 3% of your evasion rating. 3%? But then again, you're getting a lot more evasion now as a base. Cannot recover energy shield to above evasion rating. I mean, that wouldn't be a problem issue. This isn't even much of a downtime, downside. You have like two times more. You definitely don't have two times more evasion. But you have more. Well, I guess you could still argue about that. Because you're actually picking up evasion scaling for suppression. So, I mean, it's really good. What's, what's there to say, really? Versatile Combatant. We've already heard about this. 25, minus 25 to maximum chance to block attack damage. Minus 25 to maximum chance to block spell damage. 2% chance to block spell damage for each 1% overcap chance to block attack damage. Yeah, this seems really fucking strong. Like really, 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 really strong. Especially when you're glancing and all that. Pretty good. Like ridiculously good. Like pretty much guaranteed, right? And you're just taking... Like 17% less damage on average with glancing with this, with practically zero investment. I mean, you wouldn't even use glancing with this. You can, but I mean, it also depends where it is on the skill tree, obviously. Uh, new skill gems. Path of the Scourge introduces many new skill gems designed to create a new build archetype. New build archetype. Convert your energy shield into energy blade. Summon a giant tornado. Rewind your character in time and throw poisonous concoctions. Why does it say archetype when I can't see like a theme to any of these? Energy blade grants a buff which significantly lowers your maximum energy shield tr to transform your equipped weapons into swords formed from that energy. Casting the spell again removes the buff, requires a non-bow weapon. Spell lightning. Cost energy shield, cooldown time one, cast time one. What is duration? How does this work? Energy sh energy blades have minimum lightning damage equal to five percent of energy five percent of energy shield plus two. Energy blades have minimum minimum. Why is there a minimum minimum lightning damage equal to five percent energy shield? Energy blades have maximum lightning damage equal to hundred percent of energy shield. Plus 40. And it's a level 24 skill. Maximum. Oh, there's a maximum too. Impressive. Two handed energy shield. Two handed energy blades have 50% more lightning damage. Buff grants 80% less maximum energy shield. Fucking don't understand a single thing of this. I mean, I understand the damage part, and I understand the more lightning, but buff grants 80% less maximum energy shield? But then it's equal to... Reserve your ES for damage, basically? Oh, you think it reserves your shit? I don't... Does it? It doesn't reserve, it grants a buff. But what does buff grants 80% less maximum energy shield? Or is that just the value of your maximum energy shield for the 100%? Vitality also says grant a buff. Yeah, but what is it? Like, does this, isn't this supposed to have a duration or something as well? Reduces your max ES. It reduces your ES so you can get 10k lightning damage for free. Yeah, but for how long? It's a toggle? So it is like reserve. I mean, the numbers on it seem really fucking high. 100% plus 40, I would imagine the scales. Maybe even the less maximum scales too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it is like reserve. You just can't go over the value, is how I'm understanding this. So basically, you turn on the thing and your maximum lightning damage equal to 100% of energy shield plus 40, which is the boof, boof sword that you get. And then during the duration of this entire thing, which apparently is a toggle, so it's infinite, is what we're assuming. We can probably see that in the footage. If you have 10k energy shield, you now have 2k maximum energy shield until you untoggle it. And then you lose the damage, 
but you gain the energy the max energy shield is how i'm understanding this but i mean it's it seems really powerful i'm not gonna lie i mean even the fact that it's a requires level 24 and it's just plus 40 2 to 40 so that's 21 average damage level 24 for free even if you don't have anything and then it's a hundred percent of energy shield that seems like way too much so that's like an average of 52.5 right so if you have 5k energy shield you now have 25 100 damage extra i mean You think it's after the 80%? I mean, that would make more sense, numbers-wise. Because then, let's assume that you have... I mean, you're never going to have 10k, because you're never going to play this on a pure ES build. So it has to be a hybrid build, right? So then, if you have like 5k, 5-6k is pretty reasonable for something like this. If you have 5k, that's 2.5k average. It will be 500, right? It's 5k, which means 1k because of the 80 max, divided by half, a little bit more than that. But that's still fucking 500 average damage. I mean, fuck me. That's a lot. I think so. Thanks for the f five gifters. Thanks. Thanks everybody subbing, by the way. Sorry, I have the alerts muted because we're doing the thing. I don't know. This seems really powerful. Seems too powerful, to be honest. Like, even in in this current stage, it seems pretty ridiculous. The thing that I don't... I mean, it's very strong, but... The thing that I don't like about it is that... It's a weird skill gem, because I thought the purpose of this patch was to promote... Defenses to the scrubs. And then they implement a gem that gets rid of your hybrid defenses to then give you big fuck instead. It's like, hold on. Isn't this kind of against what we're trying to do here? We're trying to get people to build defenses, yo. Yo, thanks for all the subbers, guys. Again, really appreciate you. Sorry for having the stuff muted. But if I also call out the alerts and everything, we're gonna be here until tomorrow. I mean, interesting. Very, very strong. I don't know. And again, even if you don't use energy shield, you can just use it for just having more damage. Odd. I would imagine, like, the flat numbers don't scale that high, but any amount makes a difference. It's flat damage. Hopefully it looks cool. I think we can see it in the thing. Oh, true. It does need energy shield. The actual base cost of the energy shield is pretty high. 136 is a lot. So it might be like life tap, but, but energy shield, where you're just spending like fucking 6k. But then, does it count it before, after? We're gonna look through the footage. The footage had this shown, so yeah. All right, tornado. Creates a tornado that repeatedly damage en damages enemies around it. It will move forward for a duration during which projectiles can collide with it to deal damage as though it was an enemy. Then it will chase down enemies for a secondary duration and reflect a portion of the damage it took from your projectiles to them in addition to its own damage. It's like projectile hydrosphere, but with built-in chain. Interesting. Level 34. It's AoE and the orb and physical. Damn. 33 to 49 physical damage. Cast time is 0.75. Crit chance is 5. And it's any projectile. It's not even like an attack or anything. It's just any projectile. Base duration is 2 seconds. Base secondary duration is 4 seconds. So it only moves towards enemies on the secondary. We'll move forward for a duration. 
during which you can hit it, and then after that, the secondary duration, you can't hit it anymore, but now it chases shit down. Okay. Maximum one tornado. Okay, that's probably gonna be an enchant or something. Ah, that would be too strong. Can be hit by your projectiles up to 20 times. Reflects 10% of damage taken to enemies. 10%, 20 times you can hit it. Deal damage every 0.25 second. Fuck me. And it has base damage and it reflects. It seems so strong. 10% to enemies. Can hit it 20 times. But for a short, somewhat short duration. But realistically, you want to scale duration on this anyway because the base secondary duration is 4 seconds. It's incredibly long. And it deals damage every 0.25? But what is the what is the efficiency? Is it just a hundred percent? There's no way. It reflects ten percent of damage taken to enemies. Is it just the ten percent? I thought that's the number that it stores per hit. Nah, no, that would make sense. That the efficiency would be 10%. But then what about its base damage? Because that's just reflected damage. That's not the base damage. And even the base damage is pretty high. Passionals have 28,000 words. 29,000. The passionals seem insane. I don't know. This seems really strong. Your crit? You can crit the tornado, then the tornado can crit? Sure it can. It's kind of weird that it's got its own separate crit, but yeah. I mean, it is a spell, so tornado shot's kind of an odd example, but... Yeah, I don't know. This looks really strong. Looks very good for self-hit, for self-cast, you know? It's like you just put this shit down and... Bam. In many cases, you're going to get two, three times, maybe even more damage. I don't know. Seems really nice. It's just there, you know? It's not always there, but it's there a lot. <clears throat> Would it work with Forbidden Ride? Forbidden Ride is a projectile, sure. Hmm... Reserves mana, what is this? Temporal Rift, right. Reserves mana to apply a buff and leave after images on your recent ca recent past. Cast the spell again to return to the oldest after after image, teleporting to that location as well as resetting your life mana and energy shield to the values they had seen. Like it's literally Weaver ulti. This spell cast speed cannot be modified. It's 0.25 cast speed. Hmm, but my calculations, 0.25 cast speed is a lot slower than clicking your logout macro. Hmm. Buff makes you unaffected by temporal chains. What? You're unaffected by temporal chains? Fuck me. I mean, logging out is instant. I don't know, it's a cool concept. I, I do like it. Even for repositioning, just like if you're clearing a map and you left like a bunch of mobs in the pack, just click it. Right? It's like a reverse telekinesis or something. <laughs> uh -oh, I don't know. Poisonous Concoction throws an explosive bottle that deals unarmed damage in an area and has a chance to poison. Can consume charges from life flask to add further damage. Requires an empty main hand and no offhand weapon. Damn, they're really doubling down on the offhand weapon thing. 26 to 39 added chaos damage. This is... 115% of base attack speed, 100% effectiveness, level 12. Attack. Projectile. Chaos AoE. 40% chance to poison on hit, 6% critical strike chance. Consumes 2 charges from 1 life flask if possible. Deals added chaos damage equal to 3% of flask. Recovery amount if charges were consumed. Total recovery amount? 
Okay, this seems really strong as well. I mean, the damage effectiveness on it is pretty terrible, but you can somewhat shotgun with it. I mean, obviously, we don't know how much chaos damage we get, but 26 to 39 at level 12 is an insane amount. It's only 100% effectiveness, but it's 115 attack speed base. I mean, it's still a somewhat annoying ability to use in the way that it hits, but... Yeah, of course you don't get any main hand weapon, but even comparing it to Concoction... I don't know, it seems very powerful. It seems like you can really go ham with this. Not to mention that... I mean, we don't really know the extent of the new skill tree, but with the current skill tree, scaling life flask recovery and poison is very simple. Listening to Divinity. Soul Link. Man, am I really interested in this? Target an ally player to buff, which links you to them for a duration. While linked, your energy shield will intercept some of the damage they would take. Target dials while linked, you will also die. Skill cannot be used by totem straps or mines. Aw oh, man, it's got a duration, so you can't really do those challenges where like everybody's linked together. It's like you'd have to be recasting it per every player every time. That's lame. Why would this have a duration? Makes no sense. Link targets take 5% less damage. 30% of damage from hits against target is taken from your energy shield before them. Link breaks if target leaves range or line of sight for 4 seconds. The range seemed pretty big. Not that big though. Maximum 1 link from any source per target. Oh shit. You die if link target dies. Man, this sucks. <laughs> Like, you can't use it with minions. The duration makes it annoying. It's level 1. So what? It's not about how much it provides, it's about what it provides. You can, through the skill tree. Yeah, but it's not about... Again, like, do you really want to use this with, like, an SRS and just kill yourself when it expires? Like, you can do it, but it's just super ineffective. Like, you guys could all be playing Ignite builds right now. All of you could be playing Ignite builds right now. But will you, though? Just because you can? Animate Guardian? I mean... You just... Kill yourself <laughs> with the animate guardian. <laughs> like, your animate guardian might not die, but you will. <laughs> Use it on Hoag? For what purpose? What is this, what is the what does this give you? It doesn't give anything to Hoag. <laughs> Hoag dies when you lose virulence. True! Like, you can, but it doesn't hold any benefit. You can link it to minions. Targets an ally player to apply a buff. Well linked, the, they copy your block chance and recover the life when they block. If the target dies while well linked, you will also die. Totem traps or mines. Link target recovers 31 life when they block. Link target's chance to block. Attack damage is equal to yours. Link target's maximum chance to block attack damage is equal to yours. Link breaks if target moves. Maximum one link. Man, I don't know. I mean, these are cool for, like, support stuff, but very weird. Now, this one, though, and they're introducing three more that we don't even know about. This one, though, targets an ally player to apply a buff which links to 
you to them for a duration. While linked, this, their hits can trigger your support spells. If the target dies while linked, you will also die. Trigger your support skill from linked target's location when they hit an enemy. Link breaks if target leaves range or line of sight for 4 seconds. Maximum 1 link from any source per target. And then let's see, intuitive link support. Support this support spell skills causing them to be triggered by intuitive link. And I'd support skills used by totem straps or mines, vol skills, channeling skills, and all and skills with reservation cannot be triggered. Fuck! I wanted to do a uh, winter orb guy. <laughs> Supported spells deal 20% less damage, but it is level 1. Support spells are triggered by intuitive link. Hmm. This you can use with Hawak. Drains too much mana. It's probably even gonna go up. More than 15 mana per second. I mean, 15 mana per second is nothing. Like, 50 mana per second is not even that big. The spell, you know, you can do much with it. It might actually end up being 50. Now, about the benefits, I don't know. It sounds like you could make something really broken with this. But, hmm. Triggered spell costs mana too. True. But it doesn't have a multiplier on it. Cooldown time? Ah, oh, fucking hell. Cooldown time 0.5? Damn it, I thought the cooldown is going to be like... 0.15 or 0.25. 0.5 is a lot. Skitterbot's minion. I mean, you can do that. But Skitterbots don't hit, so it doesn't do anything. <laughs> All the suggestions that I've seen so far are of things that don't do anything. <laughs> And then you weapon swap and you kill yourself. See you later, dude. Because you unreserve your your skitterbots or some shit. Essence spirit minion thing? Yeah, Red Eye suggested the same thing, but then you just weapon swap and die. You don't need to hit? You don't? Well, Link, their hits can trigger your supported spells. White Dondi, explain this to me. Because you guys are saying a lot of the same stuff, but I... Like, you can just link this stuff, but if it holds no benefit, what is the purpose? You just cast the thing that can kill you. Streamlined Atlas Endgame. We know this one. It's gonna be interesting how much there's gonna be. Uber Endgame content. We've seen this stuff. Guild stashes and hideouts. Very poggers. Improved game systems. Improved. It's kind of interesting that in the announcement, Chris was talking about how they want dots to more or less be the same. Even though... That's kind of the case for Ignite builds. That they're just not better than they were in like 3.14. And that they're super dead. But then the Chaos dots and Physical dots are stronger than ever. And it's like... Those were already the things that weren't struggling. If you're trying to keep them on the same power level... Why? Why? <laughs> why like this? Skill gems timestamp. Skill gem and six new gems designed for party play. Then we Let's just read the gems. The Energy blade is a new skill that trans. We just read the the skills, no? And much, much more. Oh fuck! There's more. Okay, we've seen this. We've seen this. We've seen these guys. Tainted Blessing. Do we know what Tainted? Divine Font to allow enchantment of corrupted gloves, boots, helmets, and belts. Oh. Alright. Stasis Prison. What's this? Carnal Armor. Normal mana. 160 evasion and energy shield. Plus 100 to maximum life. Temporal Rift has no reservation. 100% of damage taken. Recouped as life. Debuffs on you expire 100% faster. Decent. I mean, it's pretty pog champ. 
Immortality? No. Life recouped is over four seconds. What is the downside? There is no downside. It's chess piece. How this works? Basically, I would assume that it's only hit damage. So, if you have 10,000 life and something hits you for 1,000 life, you now have 9,000 life, but you will regenerate that 1,000 life over the next four seconds. But again, it's only hit damage. And yeah. You can just get blasted because... Obviously, in this patch, there's a huge emphasis on actually having evasion rating, energy shield, and armor, which this doesn't have that much of because it's a carnal armor. But it would probably make mapping very comfortable. Like, very comfortable. There's Temporal Rift. It's the Weaver ulti thing that we read about earlier. I mean, doesn't this make it so that you can actually trigger it? Oh, no, it wouldn't. Has no reservation, but... Can't, like, pop it. Good regen, though? Yeah, I mean, as long as it's not a degen that's killing you. Free Temp Chain's immunity? Eh, but Temp Chain's basically doesn't slow you down anymore anyway. I mean, debuffs on you expire 100% faster is definitely... useful. God damn, people already went ham. I didn't even see that they showed this. This. It's very cool. I like this chess piece. I wonder how accessible it's gonna be.